Hello, this is Jem from ElevateCode.com, and in this tutorial we'll be creating a menu in a Windows Presentation Foundation application, which is also known as a WPF application. We'll be using Visual Basic 2010 Express, and I'm assuming you already know the basics of VB.net. As we go along, I encourage you to pause the video and type the code with me, and just play with the code so that you fully understand it. So let's begin. We're going to start a new project and use the WPF application template. Rename the project and hit OK. You can see our IDE is split into a design area with a code at the bottom. If you click on the window tag in the code, the properties will be brought up for the window. We'll name the window WinMain. We'll change the title to menu example vb.net. As you can see, this changes the caption for the window. Next, click on the grid tab. Rename it to grid main. Scroll down to the row definitions and click on the three dots so that we can add more items to the collection. Click the Add button, and on this first row we will make this height 25. Now add another row. We will not make changes to this row, so just click OK. Now in the code below grid.rowdefinitions, click the Doc Panel tag. Click on this tag and rename it Doc Pan Main. In the Properties, uncheck Last Child Fill. Go to the toolbox and add a menu item to this first row of the grid. Now go to the Properties of this menu and rename it to Menu Main. Delete the width so that it will automatically fill in the width for us when we change the dock of the menu to the top. If we run the program, you can see that we have a blank menu strip at the top of the form and it fits to the width of the form automatically. Now click on the menu tag and go to the items property. Click on the three dots to add more items to this collection. Now click the add button. Change the header of this item to file. We're going to add another item for edit and another item for view, changing their headers respectively. We're going to click on the menu item that has the header file and give it the name menu file. We'll do the same thing for edit and view, and you can see this reflected in our code down below. If we go back to the properties of menu file, we can add some submenus by going to the items collection. Again, click on the three dots and then click on the add button. On the first item, we will make the header new. We will make additional items with the headers Open, Save, and Exit. Now press OK. Next, we'll go to the menu item for the Edit button. We're going to add some items to this collection as well. Click the Add button and change the first header to Find. We'll add another item and change its header to Replace. Now we'll add another item and change its header to Go To. Press OK. Now click on the Menu Item tag for View. Go to the Items collection and we're going to add some items here as well. Click Add and make the header on this first item Normal. Add another item and make its header Full Screen. Add another item and make its header Zoom. Press OK. We'll expand the code window so that we can see it better. Now I'm going to go through all of the tags and rename them so that they're easier to work with later. For example, for the new menu item I'm renaming it to Menu New. I will do this for all of the tags. Let's run the program to see what we've done. You can now see that all of these item collections were actually used to make submenus for the File, Edit, and View buttons. I noticed we need a separator bar between the Save and Exit items, so I'm going to easily add that into the code by using the separator tag. I'll give this tag the name Menu, Sep, File, Exit. If you run the program at this point, you can see the separator bar between the Save and Exit buttons. Let's go back to the code. Click on the Menu Item tag for the Open button and go to the Items collection. Once again, we're going to use this to create more submenus. Click on the Add button and change the header to PDF. Click the Add button again and this time change the header to Doc. Once again, we will rename these accordingly. Now run the program. Since we added these to the Open button items collection, it is now a submenu off of the Open button. Now I'll show you how to make shortcuts. Go to the menu item for file and put in an underscore in front of the header like so. You can save time by doing this directly to the code. It works both ways. You may be somewhat familiar with this if you're used to working with Windows Forms. Normally you would put an AND sign in front of the letter you would like to use as the hotkey. However, in WPF applications we put an underscore in front of the letter we want to be the shortcut. Notice how on exit I put the underscore in front of the letter X so that X will become the shortcut key. If we run the program, you can see that the hotkeys are not yet active. However, if we hold down Alt-F, you can see how the hotkeys are now working and that the letters are underlined. This is different from Windows Forms because hotkeys are always active on Windows Forms. 
We can now use our shortcuts. For example, if I were to press X, that would fire the Exit Button Click event. Stop the program. Go to the menu item for File, and then go to the Events tab. Double click on the Click event, and it will take you to the Visual Basic code. This will look more familiar to those of you who are used to working with Windows Forms templates. We'll simply tell the program to pop up a message box when the File button is clicked so that we can see that the event is being fired. I'll make a region for these menu items and place this code inside of it. We can use the same procedure for the rest of the buttons in the file menu to show that they are being clicked. Now if you go through the menu, you can see the message boxes pop up telling us which events have fired. You may have noticed more than one event gets called. The deeper we are into the submenu, the more of these message boxes pop up. This is different from how a Windows form calls these events. That's it for this video, and we'll pick up from this tutorial in part two. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section, and subscribe to make sure you see more of our upcoming videos.